And you're live, Bill. All right. You ready? Yes. There you go. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bill Talbert from uh, sunny Miami, Florida, uh, partnering with the Beacon Council uh, for the Miami-Dade County Hospitality and Tourism Industries COVID-19 Response and Recovery. We have an all-star lineup today, starting with the mayor and uh, Mike Finney will uh, will close from the Beacon Council. Uh, a lot has been happening today for us is day 37, uh, hashtag safer at home. Uh, that started uh, Monday, uh, March 16th. Uh, and so do we have the mayor ready to go? Mayor Jimenez? Well, I'm going to introduce the mayor. Um, we, we work with the mayor of Miami-Dade County, Carlos Jimenez, uh, every day since, but we work with the mayor all the time with our other uh, public and private uh, partners. Uh, obviously, things uh, have heated up. I'm not sure Mayor Jimenez uh, thought that at the end of his term, uh, he would uh, be dealing with this. Mayor Jimenez started as a firefighter, uh, became fire chief, city manager, county manager uh, and now mayor of Miami-Dade County. So I guess in a lot of ways with this current role, he's still a firefighter. He's still our leader. He's still our partner. He's got a great team. Uh, he's working with the county commission. He's working with the cities. He's working with the region. Uh, Mike Finney and I have been working with him on uh, some plans uh, for the future, but uh, he is reaching out to all of us. He is listening and he's partnering with the cities in the county and the counties in the region, Palm Beach, Broward, uh, and Monroe County. So bravo, bravo to him. That's uh, kind of like a herding cats, but he's, uh, he's doing great things and he's listening to us. So with that, Mayor Jimenez. I think that he's a little bit delayed, Bill, so. Okay, well, I know that the Mayor Jimenez, okay, I can, I can talk forever about Mayor, Mayor Jimenez, we've known him a long time, not as a firefighter, not as a fire chief, but the uh, city manager of, of Miami and uh, county commissioner. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that uh, I think all of us know that Governor DeSantis, either Sunday or Monday, appointed a Mayor Jimenez to the executive committee of Governor DeSantis's Reopen Florida Task Force. And that's a, the smallest group. There are subgroups, Rick Sasso, uh, is on the uh, tourism subgroup. And I know uh, that group met yesterday and I guess they had another session today, but Rick Sasso is the one uh, cruise, MSC cruises, right Rick, MSC cruises. So Rick was on that call yesterday and presented very well in that, in that tourism committee. He's the uh, only cruise person on there and you, uh, you represented us very well yesterday, Rick. Well, uh, thanks, Bill. I mean, it, it's a great group of people, cross-section of everything from tourism to uh, construction to banking. And, and we had a constructive uh, dialogue yesterday, today, and uh, tomorrow, and through the week until uh, we collect all of this uh, research that we're all contributing so we can make the plan for the governor and the administration be very clear and concise. Okay, Rick, you're getting a hook. I see the mayor. The mayor is jumping on now. And I... I think he has a two o'clock executive committee meeting of DeSantis at Reopen Florida. So uh, That's correct. I imagine uh, he's gonna jump off, but mm -hmm. he didn't get to hear all of my fine words, but I think that's been recorded. Mayor Jimenez. I recognize the picture. <laughs> Mayor Jimenez. There we go, make sure he's unmuted. There we go. Here. Good afternoon, Mayor. Mary Menes, you missed all of my fine words about you, but we'll send you a tape of that. Take it away. I, I was listening to you. I just didn't oh, know good. I was listening to you. Really? Okay. Was it okay? Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, no problem. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the check later. <laughs> okay. You're doing a great job, you and your team. And uh, once again, I, I commend you for reaching out to uh, local partners and regional partners. Bravo. Fair enough. Okay, guys. So um, if you want me to make opening statements, first of yes, all, I want to thank you. Thank you for this. And I think it's, it's uh, you know, 
it's it's what we should be doing and and uh, and i'll be doing more of this uh later on with the governor and also uh at 4 30 at four o'clock i believe i have a uh, a, a town hall not a town hall but a a a, a group meeting uh with how to open up interior spaces so let me uh again thank you bill i want to thank the beacon council greater miami convention and visitors bureau the hotel association of all today's panelists hospitality and tourism is, industry is the biggest driver of economy here in miami-dade county you know it's hard to believe that less than 100 days ago we we're celebrating super bowl 54 here in our county it put the, the world spotlight on our community and it was spectacular and less than 100 days ago also gave my final state of the county address where I announced record levels of unemployment, stronger than ever county budget. Then the cor coronavirus hit around the globe, forcing us to close non-essential businesses and our hospitality sector has been really hit hard. And let, let me say it's not essential. It's just, it, it's for the sake of our health, we had to close it down. You know, I bring this up not, not to feel helpless, but to remind us just really how strong and resilient we are. My here in Miami-Dade County overcoming har hardship it's built in our DNA. We are hardwired, not just to survive, but actually to thrive when we find ourselves facing adversity. We made it through uh, other devastating challenges in the past. You know, nobody can forget Hurricane Andrew in 1992, 9-11 in 2001, banking and mortgage crisis in 2007, and about three years ago, the Zika outbreak. All of these were horrible events, uh, but with each one, we came back stronger. Our community has the ingenuity, the drive, the talent to make a big comeback now also. On the health front, Miami-Dade County has, been a, has seen a steadying of the hospitalization numbers. That's encouraging news. We monitor these numbers daily to see if we are tamping down the curve. We're letting science lead of all our decisions and we continue our work with local, state, and federal healthcare experts to determine how we might begin to open outdoor spaces and transition to a new normal for our businesses. Later today, I will be meeting with a new normal working group that will be focusing on when we can open shops, hotels, offices, manufacturing, and small businesses. They're all interior spaces. I'm also a member of the governor's reopened Florida task force. We're meeting daily and I'm sorry, but at two o'clock I have to go to come up with a plan that fits each region of our state. I wanna thank the governor DeSantis for his leadership in preparing our state for this new normal. The hospitality and tourism industry has been a hit especially hard by this pandemic. So this sector is at the forefront of our recovery work. As you know, MIA uh, and Port Miami are the two largest drivers of our economy. They're critical to the health of our hotels, restaurants, retail shops, and cultural events, and vice versa. You know, the, the health of our hotels, restaurants, retail shops, and cultural venues are also vital to MIA and Port Miami. We've spoken at length in previous town halls about the county's health and safety measures now underway at our airports and seaport, along with our public transit and public spaces. I've issued executive orders on social distancing and the use of masks, and we have provided a wide range of services from hand sanitizers on buses and the Metro Rail to more frequent deep cleaning of our facilities. So today I wanna to focus on the business side of COVID-19 recovery plan. Start with MIA. As with most airports worldwide, MIA has seen its passenger traffic fall by more than 90% since March. That's due to the unprecedented downturn in air travel worldwide and global travel restrictions. Today, last night, I think we had about 7,000 passengers when we normally have about 120,000 passengers per day. However, the number of uh, cargo flights at MIA in April has increased due to peak global demand for essential items such as medical supplies, equipment, and pharmaceuticals. Air cargo has never been more critical to the well-being of our community than during this global pandemic. Even passenger airlines are now using their planes to move cargo through MIA. Federal government also is helping MIA transition to the new normal. Airport, we're receiving about $207 million in CARES Act funding, making our airport the largest grant recipient among all airports in Florida. And I appreciate the federal government for recognizing MIA's critical role as the busiest international gateway in Florida. I also want to thank Senator Marco Rubio for his work on the CARES Act and our South Florida delegation for their support. MIA has a local economic impact of about 32 billion and that number nearly quadruples to 118 billion when you include its impact across the state. In terms of jobs, MIA directly and indirectly supports nearly 300,000 local jobs 
It totals 700,000 jobs when you include related uses across the industry. MIA will use this grant to support the airport's ongoing efforts to provide essential travel and trade and to essentially eventually resume full operations once health conditions allow it. On April 7th, the Board of County Commissioners also approved my $64.8 million relief plan for the county's business partners at MIA. It will provide some relief to concessionaires, car rental companies, cargo handlers, and any other tenants in the county's airport system that are currently in financial distress. Another major driver of the county's hospitality and tourism industry is obviously Port Miami. Due to COVID-19, all cruise operations are closed. To help our cruise lines, um, Port Miami has waived all lay birth fees for home ported ships. It has proved critical uh, financial help to these companies. In the meantime, all cargo terminals remain open for business. Port Miami keeps cargo moving from ship to shelf. This uh, brings essential food, medicines, supplies to our residents as well as people along our eastern seaboard. To develop stringent safety protocols, Port Miami continues to work closely with its crews and car cargo partners. They include the Coast Guard, Customs and Border Protection, or Department of Health and the CDC. All three terminal yards have implemented daily sanitizing procedures and temperature checks for their frontline workers. Port is definitely open for business when it comes to cargo. Critical port facilities also remain open, including the business permits unit, maintenance and repair section, Miami-Dade Police Seaport, and Miami-Dade Fire Rescue and many other operations. In addition, an average of 100 employees are working remotely from home daily. Our airport and seaport play a vital role in the health of our hotels, restaurants, and other tourism-related businesses. So as we're moving forward to a new normal, I want to address the question that everyone keeps asking, is that is when? When uh, will we be opening hotel, hotels, restaurants, and other hospitality businesses? It won't happen all in one fell swoop, I can tell you that. We'll be in stages to ensure the health and safety of everyone in our community. Once again, our medical and health experts and, and are guiding our decisions as to when to open up again and how it can be done without spreading the virus. Already, we're heading in a positive direction. We will begin opening our county's parks, marinas, golf courses, and open spaces sometime in the next week or so. We will have a tough enforcement to make sure pe uh, people follow social distancing rules. With kids out of school and so many people working remotely, we need to find ways to make sure everyone is getting fresh air, sunshine, exercise, and need to stay healthy. Our medical experts agree with that. So this new Parks and Open Spaces work group is now serving as the model for creating a hospitality, tourism, and small business work group. I look forward to working with you. With clear protocols in place and strict enforcement of the rules, we'll be able to get our economy back to this new normal. We will have to work differently to protect everyone's health. Like I said at the beginning, we are strong, we're resilient. Overcoming shocks like hurricanes and economic hardship is built into our DNA. I do see a light at the end of the tunnel. That's a good sign. And I want to thank our residents for your patience, your fortitude, and most of all, for the kindness you continue to show one another during this difficult time. Thank you all very much. And uh, I don't know what the, how you, you guys are going to format this. If you want to ask some questions, I'll be happy to take them now because, again, I, uh, I will have to move on uh, around 2 o'clock uh, because I have a call with the governor's task force. I mean, well, I'm looking at the uh, webinar chat, Zoom, uh, and uh, the questions, uh, I think you just answered it from uh, Julissa Kepner, uh, who's with uh, uh, Marriott downtown. Uh, when do you expect uh, to accept non-essential customers? You, you, uh, uh, you answered that. Uh, your colleague, uh, Commissioner Levine Cabo, uh, sent in a, 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 what's a thumbs up for your comments. So, uh, but uh, as we go along, there'll be other uh, other comments. Mike, you want to, Mike? Uh, they, they, uh, do you have any basic, this is a, just, I'm reading down these okay. questions uh, before, oh, Mike, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I do have uh, one question for you. So the legislature has been in the process, I'm sorry, Congress has been in the process of moving forward with another round of PPP. Obviously this industry has been dramatically impacted by the COVID-19. And so maybe you wanna share a little bit of some of the steps you're taking to try and ensure that uh, the smallest of businesses get access to this next round of PPP as well, including all the outreach you've been doing to banks and others. Uh, 
There you go. Unmute. 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 I'm trying. Here we go. Okay. A little bit different than what we, how we run a meeting, but that's okay. Um, first of all, I want to thank the Beacon Council and uh, the Greater Miami Chamber, uh, along with, uh, with the Bureau, for all the help that uh, they, they, they gave us during the first round. And, uh, and so what we're doing is, uh, yesterday I spoke to Congresswoman um, Federica Wilson about this next round. It has to be easier for small, small businesses, 1099s, to be able to access uh, the, the funds. It also has to be easier, uh, and I think that what they're doing, they're opening it up to smaller community banks and also credit unions to be able to give these kind of loans uh, that, uh, that are so sorely needed by our small businesses. And so uh, I would hope that uh, the hospitality industry is uh, accounted for in, uh, in, this new, in this new bill, bring back as many of these workers as possible. But look, even, even if they do, and let's say it's for another you know, uh, 10 weeks, you have, we have to somehow get this uh, hospitality industry open again. Uh, we've got to find a way to open the beaches again. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to do it right now, but find a way to do that because they're kind of linked, you know, with Miami Beach and all. Um, and then how to do things, you know, in a, in, a, in a way which protects the health and well-being of our citizens. Unfortunately, we don't, we, we're, not, we're not looking at a vaccine in the next, within, within the next year, so we have to have a new normal. That's why I'm gonna be looking to you all to give us the guidance along with our medical experts of how you can open up safely, but also profitably, because it makes no sense for us to say, yeah, look, this is the way you can do it safely, but you can't make any money. And so you won't be, you won't be op opening up anyway. And so there has to be, how can you open up safely, but also profitably uh, to get our industry back? Your industry, this industry is vital to Miami-Dade County. It's thousands of people you know, rely on this industry. Our airport and our seaport, which are the two leading economic generators of this community, rely on tourism. You know, a lot of the traffic that comes through to MIA is coming to us, right? They're gonna stay here. Obviously, all the traffic that goes through the, the cruise lines, 90% of the people that end up on a cruise ship are coming through MIA. And a lot of those folks wanna lay over for a day or two here in, um, in Miami Beach and, and, and our great community. Um, the good news is I think people, since being locked up for about you know, a month or so, are ready to do something outdoors, all right, and are ready to vacation somewhere. We just have to make sure that it's done safely. Uh, and that's where I'm looking to you all to help. And, and again, I'm looking forward to the second round of the CARES Act and, and making sure that you all uh, access that, those funds and that we're given the and we access the, the, the money that we deserve down here in Miami-Dade County. Yes, Mr. Mayor, quite a few questions are coming in. Here's one more. Um, which opening decisions will be made by the state and which will be made by the county? Well, I mean, it, it's, you know, the, the governor um, has a right to preempt certain things, but I don't think the governor is gonna be preempting. Um, I think he understands that things are different in Southeast Florida than they were in the rest of the state. And if you actually look at it, you know, Southeast Florida is the place where this has, you know, hit the worst. And so I expect that he will issue some orders for the state, but then allow some flexibility for the Southeast uh, Florida uh, area to issue some of their own rules and maybe go a little bit more guarded than the rest of the state. And I certainly uh, agree with that. Um, and he's, uh, he actually, the, the state actually looks a lot towards Southeast Florida. So a lot of the the orders that they've given, they kind of look and say, okay, what's, what's happening down there? And they, and they understand that things are a little bit different down here. And so uh, while I sit on his task force, I do believe that there's gonna be some difference in, in certain areas. There's no reason to close beaches in certain, in, in stretches of Florida where you don't have massive throngs of people that are gonna be descending on that beach. But here, it's a little bit different. You will have you know, thousands of people that will be you know, descending on a stretch of beach that may be 10 miles long. Um, and so we have a little bit different situation. And so I, I think that the, that the governor will, uh, he understands that. And so we'll see some differences here than the rest of the state. There's a, here's another one. There's a lot of questions in the chat about when uh, various aspects of the community will reopen. And I know you've uh, indicated uh, that you're going to be thoughtful about it. But put another way, someone asks, 
uh, how much lead time do you think you'll be able to give to the businesses and their employees so that they can get prepared to return to work, especially from the employee standpoint who may have to arrange childcare and other things? Great, great question. Um, we're going to do the same thing with, uh, with open spaces. And, you know, I kind of said, hey, looking at it sometime next week, all right? But we have to prepare our own infrastructure in order to do that. The number one thing we have to prepare is the ability to enforce the rules that we put in place. And so um, as you know, the first round of to today, as we get this you know, huge you know, number of folks that are going to be talking about a whole bunch of different sectors, I'm going to be dividing those sectors, um, you know, hospitality, retail, malls, uh, restaurants, and all that. And even in restaurants, big restaurants, small restaurants, medium-sized restaurants, and I want them to work quickly with our medical folks to say, okay, these are the regulations. Then figure out, okay, when is the right time? There are certain metrics that was put, put out by the, the White House that I think that we have to meet in terms of how many, of a declining number of certain things. We meet the metrics in two, of two or three of the four um, measures, uh, but that will give you a good indication, okay, all right, we're getting close, okay, we're gonna do it here. We're gonna open up this that day. We're gonna open up this this day. And it won't be like at midnight, I'm gonna say tomorrow you can open, okay? Uh, that It won't be like that. It'll be a lot more measured, a lot be more, more controlled. And so you'll have time to get ready because we're gonna ask you to do some of the, some of the enforcement of the measures that we're gonna be putting in place because we don't have all the, all, the, all the manpower to do that. So the individual, individual businesses are gonna to have to do, take part in that. So Mr. Mayor, you're right up against your time limit. So I wanna make sure that we're not the cost for you being late. But I do sure. have one last question. Representative Joe Geller sent in a question asking, in addition to the work that the governor, of course, is doing the executive branch, what can the legislative branch do to help? Oof. Well, you know, it's, it's tough for a legislative branch to, uh, to get involved because it takes so long, a legislative process. And so the, the governor is much more nimble. Um, and um, what well, we could help, uh, I'm sure everybody, you know, needs help with uh, whatever, whatever the governor needs in order, uh, what, whatever authority he needs to process things quicker, especially unemployment claims, those, those kind of things. Uh, I think that that's one way you can help, you know, the citizens of the, of the state of Florida um, because, because he's working under uh, emergency powers, he has extraordinary powers, just like I have here in Miami-Dade County, I have extraordinary powers. And the reason is because we can't convene a meeting every, every you know, two days to say, gee, I want to do that. I mean, we, we've got to be a lot really nimble. So I would hope that uh, the legislature will look at uh, ways that they can help local government and then also help local businesses to recover, maybe some funds, maybe some, uh, some loans, additional loans, on top of what the uh, federal government is, uh, is putting in order to you know, stimulate the economy and re-stimulate the economy here in, in Florida. Bill, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your leadership. And uh, on Friday, the governor's asked for recommendations from uh, the committees and the executive committee. How do you see that rolling out this Friday? Really ambitious timetable. Uh, I, I know that they must be doing a lot of work in the background as the executive committee member. They just kind of tell us, hey, this is what was spoken about. These are some of the recommendations. What, what do you all think about that? And so uh, you know, this is the second, third day of the executive committee at uh, now at two o'clock. And so we'll, we'll find out what the work that was done at 10 o'clock um, but I'm sure that the governor is doing a lot of work in the background and the staff is doing a lot of work in, uh, in the background. It's ambitious. It needs to be ambitious. We can't mess around. We can't, we can't drag our feet. A lot of people are suffering right now. And so I applaud the governor for moving quickly. Uh, we're going to move quickly here in Miami-Dade uh, to get at least a plan to reopen. Um, you know, in, in as quickly as possible so that when we can actually pull the trigger on that, it's ready to go. And then we have to say, gee, I wonder how we're going to do that. Now, we already know how to do that. And here's, here's the plan. And then people already know what the plan is, get ready for the plan. And, uh, and so that when, uh, when the actual order is given to implement it, it can be done uh, quickly. It's the same way that we're doing it with the uh, outdoor spaces. Uh, we already have the plan. It's being distributed. 
so that when we say, okay, now this is what we're going to do, everybody knows it's not caught off guard and that we can, we can implement, it as, uh, implement it as quickly as we can. Great, thank you. And uh, Rick Sasso, who's on the uh, tourism working group, he's going to give us a report. Uh, I guess he's had his third third meeting, and he had one this morning at ten. So, Mayor, thank you. Whatever you need from this team, uh, we're supporting your efforts. Uh, you know, we're nimble, and uh, thank you for all you're doing. And thank you for the regional approach. Thank you for the partnerships. It makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing you uh, later this afternoon as uh, in a much bigger group, but you are a very, very important part of the, uh, the reopening of Miami-Dade County and our economy. So I look forward to seeing you later this afternoon. Thank and you. Thank Say you. hello to Lourdes. Say hello to Lourdes. Thank you. Yeah, everybody you. loves Lourdes. I know that. <laughs> She's trying to run for mayor. She'll get, she'll get, she'll be in a brief. You know. Thank and you. And be sir. a much better mayor than I ever was. I don't know. All right. Sure. See you all later. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Mr. Mayor. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're always nimble, so I've got my 10 minutes. I'm going to talk about the, our tourism piece, and uh, thank you, Mike, for putting these together. I think this is the, the fourth you've had. You know, it was uh, March 16th. Uh, the mayor mentioned uh, February 2nd, uh, the Super Bowl. March 16th, once again, 37 uh, days ago, is when the Bureau went uh, safer, at, safer at home. Uh, and working remotely. Uh, so six days later, uh, Rolando and his team uh, put together what is now known as Miami Eats. Uh, six days, not only uh, put it together, gave it a name, it didn't exist before. Gave it a name, Miami Eats, order out, uh, help out, uh, launched it, uh, and got it uh, media coverage on the seventh day. So that's uh, pretty nimble. And the mayor mentioned uh, crises in the past. And so your bureau has been, uh, been there ready to go uh, for every crisis. We're demonstrating once again that this talented team on the tourism side of the business, uh, including meetings at conventions, uh, are ready to go. So that uh, 37 days ago, uh, we had 320 uh, restaurants uh, in Miami, uh, Miami Eats, and now we're up over over a uh, over a hundred, uh, over a thousand. Quickly, we're going to look at this uh, chart here. If you're on, if anybody's on the uh, web, uh, go to www uh, three w's whatever gmcvb.com, gmcvb.com, and look up at the top left hand corner. And you'll see click-throughs for all of these. And then if you see our logo, uh, we're gonna end uh, with our video. You'll see some other videos today. Uh, you'll see our new Miami Shines video, English, Spanish, and Creole uh, on that website uh, right now. But if you look at this, uh, uh, this chart here, you can see the things that the Bureau has been doing in uh, 37 days. Educate, mitigate, and stimulate, EMS. Uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, programs that we've launched that people aren't that familiar with. That's why you go to gmcbb.com and you can see not only Miami Eats, but uh, uh, some of the newer ones, uh, the Miami uh, Virtual, Virtual Miami. We see a lot of people now that we're, we can't do face-to-face -face and we can't go uh, really experience things, but uh, this showcases our local, uh, local virtual events, our webcams and videos, and if anybody has stuff, throw it on there. That's a, that's a very, very entertaining site. You know, the mayor, mayor talked about uh, hotels, and there are a lot of hotel folks on the, on the call, and Wendy, our partner, is here, Greater Miami the Beaches Hotel Association. If you look at that lodging section, gmcbb.com forward slash lodging, a lot of that is for the essential lodgers. That's a group of 17, 17 kinds of groups uh, first responders, medical folks, uh, National Guard. And so there are 124 outside of Miami Beach, outside of Miami Beach, Miami Beach has one open. Uh, there are 124 hotels outside, uh, outside of uh, Miami Beach that are part of this essential lodgers. So there is, is some business and uh, we applaud those hotels that have reached out we also have uh, Miami Salutes. Uh, that is uh, Miami, uh, the Bureau and our partners 
uh, special offers for our first responders and our hospitality folks. Uh, one partnership that uh, we launched or relaunched almost immediately was the United Way Operation Helping Hands. And Wendy's involved in that. That's gmcbb.com uh, forward slash help. And you're gonna hear also from uh, FIU School of Hospitality, uh, Dean Chang. Dean, congratulations again for, for that new title uh, on your name. Uh, Dean uh, Chang uh, leading the uh, Chapman School of Hospitality at FIU. And Wendy and I and are, are honored to be part of the Dean's uh, uh, council that advises them. And ha actually had a Zoom meeting yesterday that we, we kind of did, uh, did two things. We've got Miami Eats, Miami Virtual. Uh, and also there's a thing, a, an item that talks about the, co the uh, virus, lots of different sites and different, uh, uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, pl places. We, we just put stuff out there. But the, the uh, help, there are lots of programs that none of us are really aware of that don't, don't get a lot of publicity. My view is the more, the more help we can give to our, particularly our industry, uh, the better off uh, we, we will be. But once again, 31 days ago, we had, uh, here's Miami Eats, and we have a new, actually a new part called Treat Your Heroes. This was a, a matter of discussion uh, at the Miami Beach uh, City Commission this morning. And uh, uh, Commissioner Samuelin, and it's a program, uh, Miami's Meals for Heroes Miami, that's uh, really done some great, great things. And the Bureau has partnered with them uh, in the Beach uh, City Commission and a discussion item uh, gave us, a, gave the Bureau of Partnership a great shout out. Remember, it's all about partnerships, uh, but also on, on Miami Eats, on Miami Eats. Uh, when we started with 300, there are people in the restaurant industry who have takeout or uh, order out uh, or delivery uh, that are working today because of the Miami Eats program, order out, help out. And so that just has taken off. I don't know that any of us, when we started, I don't think Rolando, well, we had a, a vision of, uh, of what we wanted, but started with 320 and over a thousand now. Once again, jobs, jobs, jobs. So uh, once again, a bureau led effort and, uh, and it's a kind of responsive ideas and uh, being creative. And we've seen that program now uh, copied in other destinations. And I think that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's how it is. And so we don't call the lawyers, remember we, we invented uh, and created Miami Spice, thanks to Stephen Haas, uh, I think it's the mother and the father of Miami Spice, but uh, Miami Eats, order out, take out. So one of the things, uh, uh, what we did after 9-11, after 9-11, was to, uh, to have, we along with Vegas, hit the market uh, about 40 days after 9-11 with a new, uh, new softer message, less hard sell, and once again, here the Bureau uh, last week uh, has launched this. And I can tell you, I mentioned the meeting side. Uh, last week, an early version of Miami Shines. You can go to my great GMCVB, hit our logo, and you're gonna, you're gonna see the video right now, English, Spanish, and Creole. But uh, uh, our convention sales team took this document, which is a softer, Kind of a shout out. We you know we're all in this together, and sent it to uh, our the meeting planners around the country and around the world, and we got a great response, great support. And I can tell you, we have some uh, conventions that are booked in September, medical conventions at the Miami Beach Convention Center that are looking forward to coming here in September for their for their uh, convention. So that's uh, we people want to travel, uh, and they all want to travel to Miami. We become one of the top destinations in the world, and we're not going to lose that uh, by all of us working together, our elected leaders, uh, our industry partners, and our associations. So, with that, I'm down to one minute and 26 seconds. I'm on the clock. Times I'm on the clock to roll the looking video. ahead is what moves us forward. It's in those moments when we discover who we truly are, where we appreciate more than ever the beauty of life and turn that admiration into inspiration.
with life-affirming optimism and a thirst for endless discovery. There's a place with that same bright, sun-drenched attitude. It radiates from everything, from every corner, and from everyone. It turns bricks and mortar into masterpieces and lets nature thrive in its natural state. So we invite you to look forward to a brilliant tomorrow in a place that sparks joy and ignites smiles. We can't wait to welcome you with open arms. Until then, we stand by you as you stand by. Ready for our Miami sun to shine brighter than ever. Let's shine together. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There it is, Miami Shines. I've got 18 seconds, but uh, we are now going to go into a stage of we're going to start evolving uh, this into a, a marketing program. Obviously, it will be local. Remember, a vacation in your own backyard after 9-11, uh, regional, statewide, and we uh, ultimately will evolve into, uh, into international markets, but it'll be slow evolution. The mayor talked about that. American is on later. My time is up. Thank you for listening. Oh, now I'm introducing uh, Wendy. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Bill. How are well, you? I love your background. That's a beautiful background. Thank you. Uh, my Wendy, is, as I mentioned, is also Rick like that, too. Uh, Wendy uh, is a partner of, of our, one of, probably our biggest partner. She uh, She's never said no, and we've never said no, but uh, she's the CEO of the Greater Miami and the Beaches. Hotel Association, uh, they're doing great work. Uh, Wendy comes from a hotel background. And so with that said, and, and like I said, Wendy and I both serve on Dean Chang's FIU Hospitality School uh, uh, Dean's Advisory Council. So Wendy, uh, I just ate some of your time. Go ahead. That's okay, I'll be quick. Thank you, Bill, so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and I appreciate uh, Mike, Finney, uh, thank you so much for including me and I, and I appreciate your compassion to help our workforce and small businesses. Um, JC, looking forward to working with, I wanna be on that plane with you, by the way. I'd like to be on that plane with you right now. Uh, looking forward to working with you and our American Airlines family. And Rick, it's lovely to meet you uh, today and I'm looking forward to working with you, getting those cruise, cruises um, open up again. Uh, Dean Chang, thank you for a great uh, Dean's Advisory Council meeting yesterday, very productive, and, and uh, we, we just really, as Bill said, we love our partnership. Just a special shout out also to MIA Director Lester Sola and Port Director Juan Curlia. Uh, just know that you can count on all of our support. So, uh, you know, this has been a whirlwind, I'm sure, for everyone. And, you know, shortly after the uh, Miami Beach Declaration, emergency declaration and then the county mayor's order, you know, our hotels closed with the exception of the essential uh, lodging hotels. And uh, we're, we're, we're at massive layoffs to include 75% of our hourly hotel employees, the total of hotel employees, 75% are hourly. We don't have to remind you of the enormous technology challenges to file for unemployment and the funds for the PPP loans were exhausted our hearts are with our employees and their families, and we can't wait at the right time, as you know, we'll work with Mayor Jimenez and uh, the other, other government to, you know, make sure that the opening is very smooth, but we can't wait to open our hotels and our restaurants, our beaches, our arts and culture, our retail, uh, our, I mean, everything, including uh, schools, parks, recreation, amusement parks, sports arenas, and churches and synagogues. Just last weekend, we, for our Greek Orthodox Easter, we were watching uh, the service, you know, uh, on TV with the priest there with the cantor, and that was it. And it was really, it was beautiful. But we we can't wait to for everything to be open again. So um, obviously, uh, Bill mentioned the partnership we have with United Way of Miami Dade, and it's a great partnership donating to the fund through Operation Helping Hands. There's just so many wonderful charities that we're working with to get food and supplies to our, our employees and members and, uh, and to include uh, Love the Program, the Sobe Wine and Food Festival and FIU Chaplain School, to the relief fund for the restaurant employees. Feeding South Florida is doing a lot of work with different charities to get food out. Common Threads is a wonderful charity as well for the, for the um, schools. 
uh, and in just even a, the adopt a box by Taste of the Redlands, which is a produce box that they're working on getting uh, donations so that they can donate those boxes, which is really great. And, and another great opportunity, by the way, Miami Eats is amazing. I, I mean, I, I, I applaud you. I grew up in a restaurant family in Maine and it's just such a great, it's so great because restaurants are always the first to, to close whenever there's a disaster. So kudos to you, Bill and Rolando and the team. And um, Bill Hansen Catering, who many of you know, uh, their executive chef, Dewey Lasasso, has created frozen red dinners ready to go in the oven at $6 a plate, $6 a plate. So if there's anyone that you think of that you want to help feed, you know, let us know and we'll help connect you. And just yesterday, J-Lo and Alex Rodriguez donated 20,000 meals to our hotel workers. Bravo to them. So soon we hope to welcome our employees back to our hotels. We know it's not gonna be easy with the COVID-19 guidelines we must follow as well as certification, sanitation, and cleanliness. We also ask uh, county leadership to schedule the, pu the public transportation, which we'll, we'll talk about more on this other committee we're on, approximately two weeks prior to opening date to accommodate our employee schedules and also to make sure that Miami-Dade County Transit is ready you know, the, the trolleys, the buses, metro at the same time, because that will be very important. That will help them get to work. Perhaps maybe providing discounted fees for them, maybe the first couple of months. So there's gonna be big challenges with school not in session. Perhaps childcare could be set up in some of the schools, something else we can talk about at another time. And any thoughts and considerations would be greatly appreciated to help get our employees back to work. So, you know, the new normal, here we are. Well, some call it the new normal, we're now referring to it as the new reality. Our employees uh, upon arrival, just to give you some, I'd like to just share with you some thoughts and conversations that we're having with other industry leading hotel um, uh, brands as well. And just what's it gonna be? What is your first stay at our hotel going to look like? And um, just to give you some tidbits to think about so most likely our employees upon arrival at work will most likely have their temperature taken by an infrared thermometer. They will be retrained on all types of service, uh, most likely wearing gloves and perhaps masks and distancing themselves while at the same time accommodating the guests in the same fashion. Our guests will approach front, front, front desk, which will almost be like a bank, uh, uh, you know, glass. We're hearing that that's going to be installed in the, um, in the hotel lobbies uh, and be escorted by staff to their elevator that will accommodate two people. You know, only two people probably at a time will be able to go in the elevator. Tables of four in the restaurants will accommodate two. Grab and go concept restaurants will become even more popular. It's uncertain whether fitness and spas will open right away, but we guarantee once we are able to come up with different treatments and services, they will be the talk of the town. Because you know, whatever we do, they're gonna talk about and it'll be fun. Catered events, weddings, even galas will become extremely innovative again and very cool. The seating around the pools and beaches will also be different and less crowded. Our meetings, conference and convention experts are already creating new layouts and technology that will play a big role to wow our attendees. So tomorrow, we, our association, in partnership with the GMCBB and FIU Chaplain School, are beginning a Zoom series, preparing hotels to open for the new reality, which will include conversation regarding best practices for sanitation, cleanliness, protecting our employees and guests, while closely monitoring government policy changes, and will include a variety of topics to include design, food and beverage, sales and marketing, and hospitality education. In closing, we would like to thank our, from the bottom of our hearts, and everybody is really so grateful to our emergency responders, our doctors, police and firefighters for their tireless efforts and sacrifices. Once we get back open and operating, we would, we would love to treat all of you to our new reality in our hotels. Thank you again so much for the opportunity and the partnership and look forward to working together to reopen Miami. Thanks a lot, Wendy. And by the way, I would uh, encourage all of our panelists to take a look at the Q&A. There are a lot of questions that are uh, scrolling in there that are relevant to your sectors. So feel free to take a look at some of those during the uh, panel or during the presentations and be responsive as, as appropriate. I also wanna make sure that I mention uh, Bruce Oros, 
uh, the chair of the GMCVB is also participating with us. And uh, Bruce wanted to make sure that uh, people recognize some of the, the less than uh, obvious scammers and other things that are out there that are attempting to get in the middle of this recovery process. So let's make sure we pay attention to those kinds of unsavory things that are happening in the community. Before I move to our next speaker, Bill and Wendy, uh, Commissioner Levine Kava, Danielle Levine Kava, is also on the webinar. And I think she has either a question or a comment for the two of you. So uh, hopefully Commissioner Levine Kava is there and can ask her question. Maria, can you unmute her? Great. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Can you see me? Can you no. hear me? Yeah. yeah. I can hear you. There we go. Great. Well, Wendy, Bill, Mike, uh, you know, I'm sending you love. I'm sending you virtual hugs. It has been uh, so heartwarming to see you in action, virtually, of course, uh, defend and protect and retool this industry. I, I know that you are the creative, resilient leaders that we need to take us forward into this brighter new future. It's not gonna look the same that it looked before, but it's gonna be even better. You've been innovative, you have been humane, you have been uh, future oriented, uh, and really we've all come together. It's, it's a beautiful thing to behold. So I wanna commend uh, hospitality, hotels, our Beacon Council. I'm so proud to serve as a member of the Beacon Council Board of the Greater Miami uh, Chamber Board as well. I'm here for you, uh, you know I'll fight for you, and uh, I'm ready for my staycation. So let me know how I can get on board as soon as the time is right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Bravo. Thanks a lot, Commissioner. Bravo. So uh, thanks, thanks Commissioner. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Bill. Uh, I want to now turn it over to uh, Dr. Michael Chang from the FIU <coughs> Chapman School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. Dr. Chang. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, I want to start by thanking the Beacon Council, GMCVB, the GMBHA, and all of our panelists for being our partners with this relief and recovery effort. Um, as the anchor institution in this community and the fourth largest university in the country, FIU is here for our community. For almost 50 years, the Chaplin School of Hospitality and Tourism Management has educated and continues to educate students and future tourism and hospitality industry leaders all over the world. When we saw the hurt that the hospitality industry is experiencing, we immediately jumped to action. We, we had to take action to help those in the industry that our current students want to be a part of. We also had to show our students the importance of taking action and helping our community. And we wanted to give back to some of those people who have given our students internships, their first jobs and current positions and we have a lot of alumni in this industry as well, many of which are restaurants and bar owners. So within five days, deciding that we were gonna take action, we launched the South Beach Wine Food Festival and FIU Chaplin School Hospitality in the Industry Relief Fund <clears throat> with a $500,000 founding donation from the Chaplin School, which came from the proceeds of the 2020 South Beach Wine and Food Festival and our industry partners, Bacardi USA and Badia Spices matched it. So together with Lee Schrager, the South Beach Wine Food Festival team and Southern Glazers Wine Spirits, we have raised over $1.4 million today, along with other big name hospitality industry leaders like Shaw Ross, Volley 305 Vodka, uh, the GMCBB, Miami's Downtown Development Authority, and even individuals like Emilio and Gloria Estefan. So to date, we have awarded over, over $1.2 million to almost 375 restaurants. Now, beyond the immediate financial relief, we are also launching recovery initiatives for the employees of these businesses through our food and beverage programming that we will be offering for free from Startup FIU Food and our newly created Bacardi Teach program, which is through our new Bacardi Center for Excellence at the Chaplin School. These participants will have one year of free access to workshops on technical skills, financial skills, entrepreneurship, and so on through Startup FIU and through Bacardi Teach. And they will also receive a certificate from FIU once they complete these learning modules. So this relief fund 
uh, will help independently owned restaurant and bar owners who have laid off their employees. The intention is for the money to be used to help them pay those displaced workers, to help those who now who have surfaced in the past. We are encouraging owners of independently owned and operated restaurants and bars to apply on behalf of their employees. And all they have to do is go to the sobwff.org website or to our website at hospitality.fiu.edu and click on the application link. They fill out the paperwork, submit it, and they should have an answer in seven days. It's basically like a scholarship application process. You apply, a committee reviews the application, you meet the criteria, and you will receive an award. So our grants are up to $15,000 per uh, business on a first come first serve basis. But the business owners are the ones who have to apply for the grant and the money is intended to be given directly to the employees up to $500 per person. And as long as the need is there, we will continue to help. So to donate, donate to the fund, uh, there's many different ways, but the easiest is just to text FIU SOBE WFF to 41444 or just visit our website and click on the link. I also want to share with you a video and you can see in the video that our business owners and employees are very grateful for this help. Uh, many business owners spend more time at work than at home and consider their employees as part of their family. So employees have been saying that they use this money to pay their bills, buy medicine and pay a part of the mortgage. Could we, uh, Maria, could we run the video please? Or Christina? We're here basically to say thank you to FIU, um, especially FIU's Hospitality and Tourism School and the uh, Sobe Wine and Food Festival for the Industry Relief Fund and the grant that they gave us for $10,000. We've been able to pay, pay over 70 of our employees. We feel blessed. You know, it's something unexpected. And at least with these tough times, you really just look for blessings and miracles to happen. And that's what it felt like. I already uh, gave the checks to all the new employees that uh, needed it, so we have 16 employees that uh, needed it. It's made a very big difference, you know, we have uh, single parents, you know, of uh, one of my employees, she has two children, she's on her own, she couldn't manage to, to collect unemployment so that helped her pay her rent. They have been able to use that money to help them uh, pay their parents' bills, fix their car, and continue much more therapy and pay for medical expenses that they really need. One of our employees even has a baby on the way. He was able to use that money for that. So we really appreciate it and thank you very much. The grant that we received allowed us to pay uh, a payroll uh, to our, our employees. Uh, the ones that are at home, we were able to give them a paycheck and the ones that are working, we were able to give them more of a paycheck. And uh, none of that would have been possible without your help and your donations. Thank you, Mike. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Michael. We really appreciate the great work that's happening at FIU Chaplain School, Chaplain School of Hospitality and Tourism. You know, next I wanna turn it over to uh, one of my favorite uh, folks here in Miami-Dade County, and that is uh, JC Lascano, Juan Carlos with Lascano, who is the Vice President of the Miami Hub Operations at American Airlines. And if you can see him, he's sitting in one of the coolest spots that I think anybody can have for work these days. And that's the cockpit of a 787 wide body. So JC, we're gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Mike. And good afternoon, everyone. Maria, if you can proceed with the video before I get going with the presentation. It's easy to be an airline when there are blue skies ahead. But in our 94 years, we've weathered many hard times. Coming out the other side, always better, always stronger. And as we move forward, one thing stays on our minds. Why do we fly? We fly because people need to get home. And life-saving equipment needs to get to the lives that need saving. 
We fly because you're doing your part to keep the world moving, and we want to do our part too. And we keep flying for one reason. Strong as a shark. You. You are why we fly. Thank you so much. I am going to go ahead and uh, switch over and, uh, to the presentation. So. Okay, as uh, Mike mentioned, I'm sorry, the information on behalf of American Airlines from this flight deck. We have it here in Miami. Um, just to give you a sense that we are thinking forward. Um, it is currently being used to train our ground employees and our mechanics as we introduce this aircraft into the Miami fleet uh, come the fourth quarter of this year. And so those plans have not changed for us. Um, we are indeed thinking forward. Um, American Airlines is and will remain Miami-Dade's hometown airline. I've mentioned many times how proud we are of our 30-year um, effort to, to, to be a hub here at Miami International, um, and that is going to continue. In the short term, I think everybody's felt the reductions in air travel demand has dropped significantly. We're running about a 20%, about 350 daily flights. Um, today, we're between 60 and 80 flights, depending on the day of the week. A um, little bit about the CARES Act, it provides certainly short-term support. Um, we're seeing about $4.1 in grants and $1.7 billion in loans. Um, and part of that uh, deal with the federal government uh, means that we're going to keep every one of our 13,000 plus employees on payroll, no change in their pay rates through September 30th of this year, um, in the hopes that demand certainly recovers to where we all want it to be within the next six months. Um, but it also means that we are obligated to provide essential air service to many parts of the U.S., um, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Um, but it does not mean that we have to provide flying to many of our international destinations, something that is very unique to our makeup out of Miami International, but something that you will see shortly we are very intent on doing. Um, the industry, we believe, is changing going forward, where we have traditionally seen flight schedules that operated on seven uh, days a week type service are gonna vary it by days a week and our Tuesday schedules will shrink immensely versus our Saturday schedules. Um, and there will be some other adjustments about how airlines continue to fly going forward. But we do think that all airlines, not just American Airlines, are gonna come back a bit much smaller and leaner, if you will, um, as uh, demand resumes. But more importantly, Miami is going to remain vital to the American Airlines network. And hopefully you can see on your screens what that starburst looks like out of Miami International. This is our May 7th schedule change. Um, and clearly it's uh, subject to government approvals and I'll expand a little bit on that. But what this schedule is intended to do that commences on May 7th is open Miami International in 99 destinations, 49 international and 50 domestic, and that's 31 countries. What is different from our hub and all the other hubs across the U.S. and most carriers is the amount of international flying that comprises Miami International Airport. So Miami-Dade is important to American Airlines. There are 48 destinations that American will fly only out of Miami, not any of other hubs or cities. And American is important to Miami-Dade County. There are 69 destinations that are accessible out of Miami International that you can only do so on the American Airlines network. And additionally, there are 26 destinations when you combine the South Florida airports that on May 7th, you will only be able to reach via Miami International Airport. So American Airlines um, will continue to be the gateway to the Caribbean and Latin America out of Miami International Airport. But additionally, on that May 7th schedule, we will continue to be one of two European gateways with our London Heathrow trip um, going forward, which we are operating today. But I do want to emphasize something critically important. This schedule is predicated on many of the countries we fly to in the Caribbean, Central America, and South America, making decisions to open up their doors. And so we are learning over the next several days how many of those choose to do so. Some are picking the middle of May, some the end of May, and we will adjust the schedule accordingly. Um, but Bill Talbert, whom we all know and love, uh, challenged us to have 100 destinations, and I couldn't do that for the May schedule, but Bill, we will do so for the June schedule, and the July schedule will go up to 105 destinations 
And uh, if things go as planned and demand resumes 200 daily flights. Our next page, um, hopefully you see on your screen, seems very busy, but that's by design because I wanted to share with you how amazing it is to be able to access those 69 destinations out of Miami International. Um, we are an anchor to the community and that comes with deep responsibility and being able to have a hub carrier uh, as your hometown carrier matters because even with a drastic reduction in flight schedule from 350 to what should be 150 flights come the May schedule, you will still have access to all of these many destinations that are critically important to helping uh, resume the tourism industry, bring back trade and commerce, things that we all in this community depend on. Going forward, just sharing a little bit of the things we're doing for our team members. As I mentioned previously, every employee is furlough protected to September 30th of this year. Um, we are doing enhanced cleaning, both of our internal employee break room areas, but working closely with Miami-Dade County and their enhanced cleaning of our ticket for every shift and all of the bathroom areas, inclusive of all the touch points, elevator pads, escalators. Um, we're working with a local distillery to source some hand sanitizers. So that's some, providing some business to some uh, local uh, agencies here. And we're being creative with what we do in-house. Our facilities maintenance team has built over 400 door stoppers just to keep doors open so employees don't have to touch them. Um, we're doing plexiglass fabrication, putting them up at our ticket counters and our gate areas. And as many of you may have seen, we have an in-house mask making uh, production line happening in our very own Admirals Club that's produced 5,000 masks to date. We've been able to supply the city of Hollandale and a few other organizations with some washable masks um, and something we are absolutely proud of being able to do and continuing to do. Um, and uh, we have started a temperature screening for our ground employees. There are 11 different uh, access points where we're measuring temperatures as an employee come to the airport. Um, it's been very well received and I think just another layer of safety that uh, has been uh, easy to implement. As we go forward and we think about our mutual customers, um, we've been flexible with uh, changes to travel plan, requests for refunds, um, uh, but additional making just changes. If you wanted to make a change to your city of origin or destination, we've been flexible with that. I'm happy to know we've reinstituted the Miami stopover and working and making sure that that is a free stopover. So wherever you may be traveling to or from, Miami is part of that connection that you have that ability to stay in Miami at no additional cost, vantage status, whatever that may be, through next year and extended the uh, Admirals Club memberships as well. We've modified our uh, 2020 status qualifications and created some programs for uh, million miler uh, a status achievement through co-branded credit cards. These are things that we're trying to do to focus on our very loyal customer base in addition to our usual tourist uh, traveler, if you will. Um, and then to our partners in the community, I think it's worthy of mentioning that we are making sure that all of our partners are getting their invoices paid uh, in a timely fashion. We know how critical that cash flow is nowadays and it's a responsibility that we understand but also the many partners we've done business with for quite some time, um, that it is important to keep in mind that as we shrink the business, as we insource some of the work, that we make sure they have enough to keep them viable. So they have continuity to their business as well when this demand and travel resumes. And we find that very critical. And a relationship that we carry with the many of the travel agencies, which are so important to our industry and in ensuring there's the right uh, strategy programs with regards to pricing, modified revenue thresholds so they can meet their uh, revenue goals, and just creating stomach plans, which are very popular in some of our international markets. Um, and then just, just to, to sum up, I, I think with everybody, um, we are doing things with the community we're not really mentioning. I think I'm going to call Maria Alonso here from United Way and confirm that on Friday, we're gonna deliver 3,300 meals that otherwise would have been sold on our airplane. Those are high protein meals um, that cost $30,000 that we're happy to give to United Way um, for the appropriate use. Airhouse um, will continue with the mass making mission, um, but American Airlines is here for you, for the community. We take the responsibility seriously, whether we're in a world where our customers are now having to wear face masks or we're doing temperature screenings at every checkpoint, we will partner with government and Miami-Dade County to do that right. 
whether it is we're enhancing social distancing on our flights or adapting and being able to demand drivers as we resume service, please know we are proud of that 30 year history of being a hub carrier here at Miami Dade and, uh, and very optimistic about our future and continuing to play that role to our community and helping bring back trade, commerce, and tourism that is much needed um, to South Florida. Thank you. Uh, th thanks, uh, JC. That was a great presentation. And I'm sure uh, based on the questions that are coming through, uh, folks really appreciated all the, the valuable information there. Uh, next up, we want to invite one of our cruise line partners, uh, Rick Sasso, who's the president and CEO of MSC Cruises. So Rick, uh, please. Well, thank you. And uh, JC, that was an excellent uh, presentation. I'd like to just do the same thing that almost everyone else did, and that is to make an extraordinary thank you to the mayor, certainly, to our port officials, Juan and Heidi, and also our airport friends, uh, and Mr. Cola. And I was gonna add JC to that list because during the initial phases of this crisis, every one of them were interacting with us to try and make sure we had a way to deal with the uh, logistics and the emergency that we were dealing with as a cruise line. And also our chief of CBP at the Port of Miami, um, uh, Jorge Rogue, was incredible trying to galvanize all of us. And you know, in, the, in our industry, we are competitors, but when it comes to crises, we are brothers and sisters. And I think uh, that makes us really something uh, unique. And, and those brothers and sisters extended to people like JC and I were on the phone uh, several days in a row and I had never met the gentleman before, although we've heard of each other. So it's really adversity does bring out the best of all of us. I think corporations and government alike and that's just a sign of taking advantage of an adversity to really you know, bond and find solutions. I was fortunate enough to be uh, selected to join the, the task force, the governor's task force. So we've had three already calls already. We're having a, a, every day a kind of a gathering of airline executives, hotel executives, uh, business people, uh, uh, the, the governor, of course, and the team in, uh, in Tallahassee. And I think just the exercise alone opens your mind to some of the things you may have not thought of for your own brand or your own uh, business. And even some of the things JC mentioned, I made notes of because I think, uh, you know, we can all learn from one another. So the task force's goal over the next three, four, five days is to come up with this laundry list of things that some of us may have overlooked. One of the things that came up today as an example, and I think it was our, a friend from um, Universal, uh, no, so PGA, he said that they've declined their, their charity donations because they've stopped the tournaments and their charity donations are massive. So we also maybe need to add on our short list as a, whether it's the state or federal level, how we can help to make sure our charities don't suffer because the businesses that were producing that are no, are no longer working right now. Uh, the other things that came out of the, um, the task force and the governor mentioned it on Monday, he said one of the main thrusts needs to be that we don't lose sight of the fact that essential businesses for sure, but there are also low risk, non-essential businesses that can open up or should open up. So I think what we're gonna try and drill down to is make sure that businesses that are currently closed that don't need to be closed because they are low risk and even though they don't fall in the category of essential, that that evolution can start uh, playing in the streets and in the communities around the state and certainly in, the, in South Florida. The other thing that came out of one of the calls, when you're on a, a committee like that, people find out and they start calling you. So I've had mayors call me from all over South Florida. I've had small business owners call me and say, by the way, don't forget, don't forget. One of the things that they mentioned particularly is that whatever we do, that the startup of that, whatever it is, open a beach, uh, open restaurants, whatever that is, that it's done in a systematic way to not cripple our services, not cripple the police, not cripple the fire departments, uh, to give our government uh, offices a chance to breathe the new reality so the execution doesn't happen in 12 hours, perhaps it happens in 48 hours. And that was just some of the things that the small business owners were bringing up. 
As far as the cruise sector, obviously we have faced, and we will continue to face, an extraordinary challenge. Uh, we became somewhat of a focal point of, uh, of the virus's spread and things, and even though that was on a handful of ships versus 400, and most of the ships have zero corona, we certainly took some media uh, attention that was probably a little bit unfortunate, but our three-step process was simple. Immediately, we needed to get all our passengers home. And even JC helped me with some of that when we had some uh, kind of a struggling uh, moments there. We needed to make sure we get our crew home. And we still struggle with that because there are ships that only finished their cruises a, two, a few days ago. They were at sea in some cases for 20 days because there were no ports that were accepting a ship even with non-corona issues. So we certainly had dealt with some really extraordinary challenges logistically. You know, I call this thing a medical catastrophe coupled with a logistical nightmare, coupled with a financial Armageddon. And I don't think any of us have ever had to deal with all three of those very stressful components in one moment. And here we are dealing with it. So the responsibility of the mayor and the rest of the government officials has been extraordinary. Our industry is now laying up our ships. That's what we're in the phase now of finding, let's say, what we call shelter ports for the next three weeks, a month, six weeks, uh, 10 weeks. And the industry will start to roll out its operations globally. It's not just South Florida, but globally, probably on a staggered basis. Every brand will probably do a different rollout plan on how many ships they put back in service and how soon. But we have, as an industry, Already, we met with the Vice President Pence on March 8th. And even on March 8th, we designed a plan that allowed us to really focus as an industry on what we would do for mitigation. And that included temperature testing every passenger and crew, questioning every passenger and crew, where they came from, who they were with, who they touched, monitoring their health on board. We're lucky as an industry, we have doctors on board our ships and nurses and medical facilities. We can quarantine people if necessary. We can monitor their health during a seven day cruise. And we've extended the excessive cleaning and all the things that you would do to make sure you're the purest place on the planet. And I think when we come out of this, cruise ships actually may be the most environmentally safe place to be because we've learned from the lesson and we've attacked this with an aggressive uh, approach regardless of the cost of it, regardless of the amount of labor and resources. So we have really, really taken on this challenge given the, the big challenge that we faced early on. Um, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, I think we all have to continue this kind of dialogue. I'm lucky enough to be on the task force uh, conference calls every day. I'm lucky enough to have been invited to this. Thank you very much, um, Bill and uh, Juan Carrillo. I think uh, the mayor stimulated me participating. I represent the cruise industry on such calls. The MSC is building a huge terminal in Port of Miami. Florida is the largest and the, the largest cruise capital of the world. Miami is the largest cruise capital in Florida. There's about eight, eight and a half billion dollars of direct uh, turnover, direct spending, about eight billion dollars of salaries. Our industry just in Florida, 150,000 jobs. And we rely on airlines like American Airlines because without them, we can't move all the guests that we move uh, coming from international or domestic gateways. So we have a big challenge. The industry is very keen on solving all of them in a timely fashion. And we are going to work closely with the CDC as we have been the last two months. We're working closely with the CBP and we're making sure that all of our uh, customers are going to have the purest, safest place to travel because one thing we all need, we need leisure time and we need vacations. So that's gonna come back. And when it does, cruising and airlines like American are gonna really be hopefully really spot on on how we've managed this adversity. So things are looking promising. We're not out of this yet, but we, I think we have tackled it as an industry quite responsibly. And I think our government officials here locally like the mayor and the rest have done so as well. So I wanna thank all of them again and I'm pleased to be part of this conversation. I'm done.
Okay, thanks, Rick. Appreciate uh, all that you're doing to help us through this recovery. So we have a, a very limited amount of time left, about 10 minutes or so for the plan. And I know we had a few hands go up from some of our participants. So I, I wanna make sure that we have an opportunity to recognize uh, Representative Joe Geller, who I know has had his hand up for quite a while, and Julie Grimes. So maybe we could start with Representative uh, Geller, and then we'll go to Julie Grimes. And then Maria, if we have any time left, I'll leave it to you to handle any other questions or comments. Thank you, Representative uh, Geller. It looks like he may have um, come off because I don't see the mic avail available there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Julie. Okay. Julie? Okay. I think they may have had to drop off. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and go to any other questions that you may have, Maria? Sure. So one of the, the first questions that uh, you know, people were having was the support that was going to be available uh, for the hotels in particular and restaurants as they were coming back. So from a guideline perspective, and supply perspective, what was going to be available from, from the county and from other uh, organizations. I'm going to go ahead and, and unmute all of our panelists. I'm not sure I understand the question. If there was going to be uh, support as far as providing materials, since there's been a shortage of materials, uh, the PPE, uh, how the restaurants and uh, others in the industry were going to be able to have additional resources made available to them. Well, the Bureau, will, you know, uh, will be doing its marketing uh, locally, regionally, statewide. Uh, I mean, uh, to talk about the hotels, I mean, uh, they need customers and, you know, the Bureau and our partners are involved in marketing our destination. Great destination. So we, we're ready so evolve Miami Shines into a, a straight out, more n nicer marketing program. So that's what we'll be doing. And, and we do promote the restaurants, Miami Eats, Miami Spice. And I think you may even see Miami Spice come back uh, before uh, the summer. So those are the kind of marketing things we'll do to help the, the hotels and restaurants. That's what we do. And I'm not, uh, Maria, and I, I'm not sure, is Julie referring to, I was just tech, I was just starting to text her, to products or that, that I'm not sure what, I was just asking her. Oh, that wasn't specifically Julie's question, but there oh, were some people okay. in the chat that were asking oh, okay. there have been limitations to the PPE. Yeah. Uh, what was going to, was there anything that the county was doing to be able to facilitate that? as uh, restaurants were reopening, as hotels were reopening, to be able to get additional access the same way that they've been trying to facilitate that for healthcare workers. Well, I think probably with these task force being formed as we speak, you know, with the county mayor, I, I would think that we'll know more, we'll have more information as we begin starting to meet, which is the first meeting will be today. So I think that, don't you think, Mike, that we can get, we'll be able to get more information as we yeah. move forward? Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that we have been working on in partnership with the GMCVB in Miami-Dade County, of course, is in fact this reopening strategy. And one of the major components of that really is about resiliency and a new way of working. And so all of us are going to face a new way of working. Uh, we may all end up having to use some form of PPE uh, as we access our workplaces. Our offices may require reconfiguration, which might involve you know, some policy level uh, issues that need to be addressed around permitting and things like that as we go into buildings and start rearranging them. So the answer is uh, yes, uh, issues related to uh, this new way of working are all a part of what will be addressed in this reopening of Miami-Dade County. And it's important that we do that. So it's definitely on the list. Uh, obviously, we'll have to identify sources. We think some of it can be done here. If you recall, uh, J.C. Lascano referenced American Airlines setting up sewing operations right in their executive lounge. Mm -hmm. And think about that. 
that is a business. And what I'm hoping is that that business doesn't go away when we get back to a, a new normal, but rather we transition it from American Airlines to some entrepreneurs in our community who want to continue it. And hopefully they get a contract, their first contract from American Airlines to continue supplying them for the PPA that they will likely need as a part of this. So we're thinking about things like that and preparing for that as we move forward. And then the also has, the Bureau also has its tourism business enhancement program to help smaller businesses, particularly in the neighborhoods. And we'll be evolving that as we go forward. But I, yeah, and I also think they're probably ta talking about, because a lot of our hotels are worried about the supply chain for masks, you know, and like you just said, Mike, I think there's some great companies that we have in Miami that can help out with that as well. So I've been trying to, uh, Representative Geller is on the line. I've been trying to get him. Are you able to speak, sir? I apologize, it's giving me an error. Uh, saying that, that there's a problem with the Let's, connection with your Why don't we see if, if Representative Geller can text his question? Why don't you go to the next question and hopefully he can text his in if it's a fairly short question. Okay. Maybe you can go to another question while you text before you text him. No, no, I'm, I'm trying to get to the question. I apologize. Um, as far as uh, mass gatherings prior to vaccine availability and being able to, from a hotel perspective as well, just wh what role do we see um, the, the delay in the vaccine being able to play as far as the tourism coming back in and people being comfortable with uh, traveling? Do we see that as three months and six months? Uh, just from a, a social perspective. You know what, this is the question, I mean, the the medical side has to answer that. You know, Mary Jimenez has been balancing the medical issues with, uh, well, you know, trying to get the parks open, uh, marinas open, and others to get back on it in a, in a, with, with uh, you know, the distancing, social distancing, and all that stuff. But uh, uh, these, these medical questions, uh, you know, they're different, different opinions, but you know, clearly these issues will be around. So it's how do we, we call it, I think Scott Berman the other day called it the, the new reality as opposed to the new normal. But it's, uh, it's how we all, all of us here, here all of us here uh, can adapt, uh, evolve. I think that's what Rick's talking about to operate our businesses in a different way uh, that takes into account this new, this new reality. Maria, uh, I got a, a, a note here from a representative uh, Geller. And basically he just wanted to make sure that uh, the entire audience, everyone participating in the webinar understood that he's prepared to do what he can to be supportive in the delegation that he wants to offer the delegation support for all of our efforts here as we reopen Miami. So I, I think that summarizes the comments that, that he wanted to make and our apologies representative Geller for not being able to get you alive. But also, we can give him a shout out. We do know that uh, he supports this industry and he does stuff to support it. So with that, I think we have pretty much reached our time limit. And I want to make sure we're respectful of all of our speakers' time. Uh, you all have been wonderful. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, to the GMCVB, uh, the partnership is absolutely fantastic. We appreciate all that you all do. We know that under your leadership and all the other partners here, uh, we're gonna have a very successful comeback uh, for this industry and for this community. And so thank you very much. And thank you to everyone who uh, hung in there with us throughout the, the entire afternoon. Have a great day. Thank you for your leadership, Mike. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, JC. Bye, Billy. Safe travels, JC. Yeah. <laughs> First class seats, huh? First class. Get back in the cabin. Get back in the cabin. <laughs> Who's flying the plane? <laughs>